Christy Lee, hello, how are you going? I am great, Juliet, and I'm looking forward to getting into a, a little bit of a interesting topic today. Mm, yes, I'm looking forward to this one too. This is what we call meaty, I think, this sort of topic. Meaty, juicy, yeah. yes, all those yes. words. Yes. <laughs> so what we're going to talk about today is working with people with whom you have conflicting beliefs or how mm. to lead people in your team who might have conflicting beliefs. And I think this is a tricky one because, as we know, beliefs are really personally held things. They're based on our values. Mm -hmm. And for some people, um, and I talk a lot about this when I talk with people around the team management profile, for people who are highly analytical, they're really fact-based and objective in the way they make decisions at work, mm -hmm. the way they think about things at work. And often their values aren't, it's not really important for them to bring them to work. Mm -hmm. But for some people, it is really important. And they connect with other people based on shared values. They connect, they're looking for harmony. You know, they, they want people to get along. Mm. Whereas more analytical people don't care so much if you get along as long as the job gets done. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I definitely, I'm, I'm thinking of a client I'm working with at the yes, moment. Right. We've, we've had to do some work <laughs> in this space. <laughs> yes. And I think there's, and, but even for highly analytical people, I'm working with a team of engineers at the moment where absolutely everybody in the team mm. has an analytical preference in the way they make decisions. So they're very fact-based, very objective. But even in that team, they want to talk about how do we do this? How do we navigate this? Because people are getting upset and offended by things others are saying that are around, you know, personal beliefs and values. And sometimes it's, such, it's about laziness in language. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, I think there's a real spectrum of issues here. And I think it is a really tricky area to navigate. And I feel certainly what I'm seeing and, and just society generally at the moment, it's getting harder and harder to navigate. Like there's yeah. a lot less tolerance. There is a much higher expectation on everyone to be super supportive of everything and yes. all the scenarios. And that's great. A lot, you know, there's a lot yeah. to talk about that, but it's also becoming trickier when there are different beliefs in a team. How do we respect everyone's individual beliefs? Because we can't tell people what they should or shouldn't believe, even no. if it's not what we share. Yeah. Um, so how do we be respectful of that, but also in a way that we're still being inclusive of everyone's beliefs? And it can get really complicated and really, really tricky. Yes. Um, I've worked with a lot of businesses who are you know, have a very strong religious standpoint or view or the, the owners are of a particular faith. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they often, uh, certainly the ones I've worked with, have had very strong beliefs that would be counterintuitive to, you know, a lot of society. How yeah. do we navigate that? How do we get through that? And I think I feel like it's getting in some ways more complex to navigate and trickier for employers. And I think, and, uh, and I've worked with the flip side of that, which is there might be one or two people in an organisation who have strongly held religious beliefs mm. um, and others who have religious beliefs but don't feel the need to, you know, bring them to work as much, but in an environment that's very secular and that is, as you say, seeking to be very inclusive, mm. um, but it can be hard to be inclusive of absolutely everybody when... <laughs> when people are challenged by that inclusivity. Yes. Yeah. Interestingly, um, we will have actually an inclusivity expert coming to join us for an interview on the podcast in, in coming episodes. And I'm, I'm, I really can't wait to chat to him in terms of getting, he's been doing a lot of work on this. Yeah. I'm seeing a lot of businesses and certainly some of my people powered HR members are trying to create inclusivity practices. They're trying to be very proactive in this space mm. and they might have a bit of pushback from one or two of their team members either on religious grounds or other grounds where they're trying to create an environment where that person still feels very comfortable at work and they're still having an inclusivity policy or process or, or some kind of focus without forcing those employees that might not be quite so on board to participate as fully as other staff members. So it's, it's really, you know, very nuanced. Look, it is. And I remember there were some jokes around um, and some clever cartoons not that long ago about, the whole inclusivity thing and yes we're completely inclusive 
um, as long as you believe what we believe. Yes. And if you don't, then we're going to exclude you completely. Mm. And that's not inclusivity. No. Is it? You know, that no. is the challenge, is that we need to be inclusive of everybody, not just the people who think like we think. Yes. And I think it can be easy to feel, um, uh, I've lost the word, but impatient almost mm. with people who don't come along with what we're trying yeah. to do in terms of inclusivity. But the yes. reality is inclusivity, it's a bit like free speech. You know, you can't it's have it for one thing not. and not another. Yes. yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's got to be, it's got to cross all those boundaries. And I, yes. that's, that's definitely, a, a, I guess, a challenge. And, yeah. and I think it can show up in lots of ways. Yes, it can be quite evident in someone who is opposing an inclusivity policy or doesn't want to participate in inclusivity initiatives, mm. or it can be the other end of the spectrum where a silly little offhanded joke is made yeah. that we, you know, whoever's delivering the joke thinks it's nothing, but it can have a very, uh, you know, high impact on the person that hears the joke in terms of we don't know their experiences in the world and how that might fall on yes. them. So this shows up in lots of ways. I think that's right. And I think most of the time it's actually not about inclusivity policies because mm. so many particularly smaller businesses are still finding their way to what that looks like for them. I think uh, at the moment it's still around, as you say, those, uh, you know, what would now be an inappropriate joke. And, and I think we have moved so far in terms of our understanding of inclusivity um, and our tolerance as well and things that might have been appropriate 10 years ago or even five years ago might not be now. And I think we don't want to be the fun police. Um, nobody wants to be the fun police in that sense. But I think that there... That was weird. Okay, we're back. Okay, you're back. Sorry, I was just wishing on there about how I don't think it's always about policies. I think it's often about a joke that worked, you know, not that long ago, but is no longer appropriate. Or mm. comments that nobody would have even thought twice about not that long ago. And yeah. now I'm not okay. And I think often, like all of these things, it doesn't come out until something is said or done. And then people's values kick in and their personal mm. beliefs kick in. And if yes. they're strong enough, they feel the need to say something. And suddenly you've got a situation that is difficult. Mm. And I think too, we, we talk a lot about hiring people in our businesses who have a, a values alignment with us yeah and that I think is still something that is really really important but there's always going to be some element of and you know our values and our beliefs are of course intertwined this has yeah. to bring that point up but there's always going to be a, an exception where even though generally those values align that there's a particular belief that someone holds strongly or maybe we've been talking a lot about family businesses we're, we're hiring family not necessarily based on values we're hiring because they're family and yeah. that's when we wind up with conflicting beliefs in our workplace yes and interestingly i think with family we just assume everyone has the same values because we've all been raised in the same sort of way and that that is not the truth at all within no. families we could have really divergent views and values and i think that's really valuable i think there's also i think you know we do hire um looking at a match on values but i think it mm. can become really easy to create a bit of a bubble around that too so we want diversity across all of these things and values and behaviors is just one of those so values mm. and beliefs i mean it's just one of those you know the values that we bring need to align with others but we do want some diversity in that too don't we which is the real challenge <laughs> Yeah, because we want diverse viewpoints. We want diverse um, ways of looking at the world mm. so that we can have, you know, it, it helps in all areas of business, really, but it certainly helps with how we're talking to customers and our messaging and a whole range of things. So yes. how do we create that whilst also having similar values, whilst also navigating conflicting beliefs? It mm. feels like a bit of a mind. And, you know, you overlay the fact we've got, you know, uh, a lot of very proactive legislation coming in at the moment, the Respect of Work Acts recently come into place. And, and that is really focused on dealing with primarily sexual harassment at work and our positive duty to avoid that, but it also talks to, to sex discrimination at work. So there's 
the discriminate, discriminatory elements around what's protected and religious beliefs are protected in that as well and how that interacts with actually what goes on at work. It's really interesting. And that is going to be a real challenge for unconscious bias, which is a different conversation because... <laughs> I think a lot of a whole other episode. <laughs> absolutely, because I think a lot of discrimination in the past has been partly based on some unconscious bias where people just didn't mm. even realize they were making those sorts of decisions. But let's put that aside for the second. Um, you're right, and the legislation is probably not terribly well known at this point, although everybody understands where it's coming from. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's um it's a new piece of legislation and it is expanding on existing discrimi discrimination legislation. And as I said, the large part of it is focused on sexual harassment, which is a very different um, focus, but there is some discrimination stuff bedded into that. And it's, yeah, it is new. It's just come about in the last month or so. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's interesting in terms of, you know, how it references sex-based discrimination, how that sits within anti-discrimination law generally. Yeah. And you know, we know we've had a lot of areas protected by discrimination law over the years, and, and that's just getting broader and broader. And so it's not just about navigating, having a workplace which is free from discrimination, but also um, having a workplace that, I, I think it's really what it comes down to is communication, actually, at the end of it. It's understanding that how we communicate and what we communicate, understanding or considering how that's going to land the person on the other end of that communication yes and I think when we talk about communicating I think it's up to I don't think as leaders we can leave that to our team to just sort it out I think we need no. to be proactively talking about this and saying uh, you know what does this look like for us mm. what does respectful behavior or what does respectful language look like or you know and I think that's a conversation we as leaders can lead before people get mired in, um, you know, difficult conversations around languages, jokes, uh, you know, mm. things that uh, are upsetting them. I think there's, I yes. think we can take that step beforehand. And if we haven't, I think there's no time like the present to to do that. And sometimes mm. an incident to get everybody to the table to say okay clearly we need to have this conversation sure um, yeah let's do it and you know what it comes down to it comes down to being curious like yes. having curious conversations and yeah actually wanting to understand more about the yeah. individuals on our team whoever they are yeah and what their back what's their background what's important to them what are their values what are their beliefs because once we know that then we can ensure that we're creating an environment where all beliefs are respected and even if they're different because people will have different beliefs yeah. that we create an environment where we are mutually respectful of everyone's beliefs but not expecting any individuals to change their beliefs based on other individuals necessarily yeah. it's a really fine line i think but i think it's achievable with the right leadership certainly and it's got to come from the leader um, or the leadership team to start to have those curious conversations and to be genuinely interested in getting to know your people better i think that's so true and i think that curiosity um helps ask those questions in a way so you're not mm. going into it saying right you know boom 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 we need to sort this out you're going in saying tell me about it you know yeah, tell me more about that. Tell me yes. more about that and keep asking questions. Yes, exactly. And, and, and listening like? for those answers mm. and, and not the answers, the, the nuance in the answers, the mm. tone, the untone, yes. the, the things they're not saying potentially so that you can dig a little deeper um, because the people won't necessarily feel comfortable immediately to talk about these things. If it's been, no. if this workplace hasn't had these conversations before, it will take some time. Yeah. And sometimes you don't want to say, look, we're all here because so-and-so is really frustrated with so-and-so or was really offended by, you know, you don't necessarily want to drag all that up. I think starting mm. the conversation is a really interesting one, you know, and starting it from a place of curiosity, but mm. with a clear intent to develop something that everybody understands. So a shared mm. understanding of yeah. what behaviour looks like, what 
communication looks like, what's okay, um, mm. and potentially what's not okay. And I think being able think to start so. with the yeah. discomfort of that too. You know, sometimes yeah. when these conversations happen, what I see is that people, because it's about personal beliefs so often, people get upset pretty quickly. You know, things can escalate pretty quickly. And as a leader, mm. being able to sit with that, manage that, you know, make sure it doesn't get ugly, but that it's productive. Mm. Mm. Um, and make it safe for other people to have those conversations I think is really important too mm, I think so yeah and it's 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 creating an environment I guess where uh, everyone's beliefs are respected but um, but people can and people can acknowledge that without there being any kind of um, pressure around it it would be ideal if we we're having these conversations before yeah. there had been an incident yeah you know, maybe you weren't aware as the leader of these conflicting beliefs of your team members or um, until something happened where someone was deeply offended by something or someone shared a particular belief, you didn't know it existed. So, you know, no better time than to start than now, I would say. Mm. Yep, totally. I agree. Mm. Uh, look, I think we will come back to this because I think this is a yes. biggie. And We're just scratching the surface here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> But I'm glad we've talked Don't about really it because look. it's a big thing, I think. And I think it's it's becoming more important in workplaces. And I think given that we have so much hybrid working at the moment, I think it's easy for things to happen and people mm. not to say that they're upset. Um, and yes. I think, you know, the more we can talk about these things and bring them out in the open, the better it is. Mm. It's an interesting point about the hybrid workplaces because a lot of our team members may have been hired throughout lockdowns yeah. or, or periods of time when we weren't working. And so we haven't to know them as well as we might have mm -hmm. um, some years back. And so maybe there's a bit of work to be done there as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and mm. connection to be built that we might not have had an opportunity to do. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So much to but I'm glad we've started the conversation on this and I'm certainly looking forward to our chat with the inclusivity expert coming fairly soon as well. Yes, and I think we will keep talking about this in a whole lot of different ways. Thanks, mm. Christy Lee. Lovely to talk. Thanks, Juliet. We'll talk soon. See you soon. Bye.